I, I don't know if there's any way for me to convey to you exactly what you're doing out here, dude. You, you're not saving people. You're helping people save themselves, dude. You really have helped me so much. Like, it's hard for me to express it, dude. Like, of course. I'm not angry anymore. I, I was very, very angry when he walked out. And then I, it, I thought better of it because there were so many times that I wanted to walk out myself. And but why, I didn't, and, and I wouldn't. And why didn't you? So on uh, Tuesday, I lost my sister due to a car accident. And um, it basically just shook me. And uh, I've been feeling cold, like just nothing. Oopsie is back from a first-time call out of Nebraska. Usu, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, man, how you doing? All this well. So your name is Usi? Yeah, Uxi, U-X-I. Nice. Is that a Russian name? No, it's Old Norse. Old North? Yeah, like uh, Northwestern European. Oh, nice. I've never yeah. heard that name before. Listen, man, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'll, I'll give you a tiny background. My, my life's not super interesting, but, like, uh, I'm a tattoo artist out of Lincoln, Nebraska, and uh, I was a pagan for the last, like, two years, and I've recently uh, converted over to Christianity. And um, I go to a Pentecostal church, but I don't really, I don't agree with what they're doing because I've, I've been listening to you for, like, a year now pretty consistently, almost every day. I've been doing the silent prayer almost every morning, almost every night. And uh, I just, I, I don't know if there's any way for me to convey to you exactly what you're doing out here, dude. You, you're not saving people. You're helping people save themselves, dude. You really have helped me so much. Like, it's hard for me to express it, dude. Like, I'm mentally stronger, spiritually stronger. I, I just step away. You know what I mean? And, like, I, I have a bad anger issue, like... And it's it's kind of gone now, dude. Like, I uh, I guess I guess I just wanted to let you know, dude. You're you're, you're changing things out here, and and I I can't thank you guys enough, dude. Like you, Hake, the anchor baby, everybody, dude. You guys are just it's the best podcast this side of heaven, bud. Amazing. Thank you. How old are you? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Yeah. That's amazing. My birthday is on December 10th. That's amazing. Well, if you stay with it, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, just stay with it, the silent prayer, and watch it. That's all you have to do, what's going on inside of you. Just watch it, and you haven't seen anything yet. It just, really, there's no, there are no words to express what really going to happen, how amazing it will become. But your mind will become clear. You will become absolutely free. And it's fate, not you, that you've always thought were you, was you, the anger and all that. It has never been you. It has always been a spirit that made a home in your mind and emotion. And God has never judged you because the real you have never done anything wrong. You're exactly, not guilty exactly. of anything. Man, the way you you reframed my thinking on this, man, because like you know, I I always see myself through other people looking at me because you know I got half of my face like fully tattooed, man. I'm a pretty tattooed guy, so I look crazy. But right. like, that's not even me at all. That's right. the weird thing, and it and it it doesn't feel like like I'm abdicating responsibility or anything like that. It just it's there's the soul, and then everything else that's part of the world, and those are separate things. Yes, that changed the way I think about it, and like. One thing that really stuck with me, I'm sorry, I don't mean to like ramble, but you, when when I was, when you said, when you were walking me through the silent parrot through that thing, right, it's, you step away from the house that is your mind, and you're watching people break into your house for, from afar. They didn't see you there, but those are the thoughts breaking into your house. Yes. Dude, that, like, that visual representation helps me a lot, dude. Like, so, things like that, it's, it's. It's like little things that stick with you. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And I do. That's one of them. Yeah. Well, that's amazing, man. Amazing. Amazing. Stay with it. Stay with it. And I'm telling you, man, you haven't seen anything. You will get to a point, if you stay with it, 
you will get to your point, a point in life where your focus will not be the physical at all. It will always be the spiritual. It will always be that. It's, it's going to naturally happen for you because you will become one again, and you already are, you just don't know it, but you will become one with God. You will be made whole, and the rest is easy. So stay with it. Thank you so much, dude. I, I it's, it's kind of surreal talking to you, man. I I really I appreciate you guys more than you know. Thank you. Like, life-changing, bro. Like... Well, you're totally welcome. And just, again, I just want to encourage you to stay with it. Let that working on you become more important than anything else. Do your job, go to work, and all that, the practical stuff you need to do to live on earth, buy your house. But let working on you become number one in your life. And you're going to have a full and a whole, you will have the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. You don't have to wait until you die. Amazing. Thank you, man. Thank you. Stay with it, all right? Yes, sir. All right, buddy. Call me again. Indeed. All right. Amazing. Young people waking up. You are avoiding a whole lot of misery by waking up early in life. Marilyn, oh, and get it off your chest. Well, I just was uh, wanting to respond to the question and um, wanting to relay an experience that I had. Have, um, I was supposed to, pardon me. You want to respond to the biblical question? Yes, sir. Okay. And you were about to say you were supposed to what? I was supposed to have dental surgery. And um, I didn't have a good feeling about it at all. And when I got at the office in that morning, my husband drove me. And I said, I don't want to go in. This doesn't feel right. I don't feel good about it. And he said I had to go because there was money already on the line. And, and so I did. And my surgery was quite botched. Now, I don't know if that was my headset at that time and that I was listening to the devil inside of me. I, I just have to say, I've only been listening to you for, for maybe three weeks now. And right from the beginning, what you have been saying really resonates with me. I've known that it's inside of me. Yeah. It's just that it's hard work. Yes. And so I, I started to wake up in 2016, and I did spend a lot of time in my closet. And there were times where I, I felt real breakthroughs. But it also, I, I, I just gave up because it's hard, and sometimes it just seemed like nothing was happening. Yeah. Uh, anyway, my husband has since left me after 34 years. That happened eight months ago. Nice. And I'm so grateful to God <laughs> because I never, I never would have left on my own. Yeah. And I, and I never would be in the head place that I am right now. And I just think that God's adding to my awakening with things like Jesse Lee Peterson. Amazing. And I thank you. I just thank you for that. You're welcome. But yeah, that gut voice. Can you tell me about that voice that was talking to me that morning and saying, don't go in, don't do that? Hold on. Let me go back to Mary Ann. It's a uh, first time call out of Maryland. And Mary Ann went to the dentist, and the dentist uh, did a botched job on her, according to Mary Ann. And we didn't finish our conversation. Mary Ann. Yes, Mr. Peterson, I'm still here. Thank you for holding. And you asked me about the voices that told you not to go to the dentist or something like that? Well, I, it was sitting in front of the dentist before the appointment and just a gut feeling that I did not want to go in there. I didn't feel good about it. Um, yeah. And why did you go? And my husband made me go. Oh, I Because see. my husband, he said he had money on the line. In fact, that's why we're not together these days is money. <laughs> Amazing. But, um, and so here's what I it. recommend. Don't be angry about that situation. 
so that you can understand it. And if you uh, and understanding will come, and you will understand that situation. You will see clearly what went wrong, why you went in, and you won't be mad, and you would never repeat that again. No, yeah, I understand it. I, it's my responsibility. I shouldn't have gone in. Yes, I, I think I should have heeded um, and not been coerced. Well, don't be angry um, but I've about it. I spent the last thirty-four years being coerced. I'm not angry anymore. I, I was very, very angry when he walked out, and then I, it, I thought better of it because there were so many times that I wanted to walk out myself, and but why, I didn't, and, and I wouldn't. And why didn't you? Because I had no means of support. I've had three surgeries on my spine. Um, yeah, if he'd, if he'd, if he'd have walked out. 30 years prior when when problems started happening, which I didn't, he accused me of having had an affair those 30 years ago, but he never said anything. I didn't find out until eight months ago when he walked out. Really? But yeah, the, the marriage was irrevocably damaged at that point, but I didn't know it. What made you marry him? Uh, I think that we had a lot in common initially as far as past experiences and and his mother kind of uh pushed us together oh lord no wonder yeah, yeah she was a customer of mine and do you have yeah. children grown grown oh, okay. i'm 64 years old oh, my I kids are yeah they've got they, i've got nine grandchildren now amazing and so yeah. well um are you doing the silent prayer I am. I am. I, I just like your approach with that more than what I was able to accomplish kind of going into my closet. It seemed like um, I was being taught by other places to kind of distract myself. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, it wasn't, it was difficult. And this just seems to be a little bit more productive for me. Nice. Stay with it. And you, when God quiet, said you know? go in a closet, be still know him, he mean go inwardly. He doesn't mean necessarily a physical room like a closet or something like that. He meant look within and everything you're looking I'm, for is inside. It, I find that being in the dark was helpful. Well, you can do that laying in your, uh, sitting up in your bedroom or laying in your bed. With the lights and out. And that's what I do now. Right on. <laughs> well, stay with it. I, I, I just block my eyes now and just, yeah, sit in my room. But, uh, yeah, thank you for for all your wise advice. I just, I feel the wisdom in your words. And that's because God is with you, and he is allowing you to see that. He's drawing you back home unto him. You are returning back to the Father. Yes, sir. Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day. You happy do. Thanksgiving. Stay, happy Thanksgiving, Marianne, and stay with it. Stay with it. I don't care if the whole world turn against you. You stay with it and return to the Father, and you will have paradise right here on earth. It's going to be amazing. I'm getting it in bits. <laughs> right on. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless you. Bye-bye. Marianne, did you want to respond to the biblical question? I see that you want to respond. Well... I just wanted to talk about that particular experience. Okay. In, yeah. Okay. That was it. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Amazing. John, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Jesse. Hi there. Hey, John. Hi. How are you, sir? All um, is well. Yes, sir. Um, so on uh, Tuesday, I lost my sister due to a car accident and um, it basically just shook me and uh, I've been feeling cold like just nothing and yesterday we went to saw, see her um, in the funeral home and my, I was with my parents and they they started crying and just see my sister lay uh, resting in peace and I felt uh, I was I wanted to cry but I couldn't because I felt empty and 
I just wanted to know what uh, what chapters in the Bible I could read to deal with this loss. Uh, how oh, how old was your sister? Twenty four years. And so, uh, what happened? What happened with the accident thing? Uh, so we uh, we went to talk to the police, and basically, she uh, though her their side was that uh, she came home, she was coming from home from work, and um, she uh, she kind of got uh, I guess she was tired and. When uh, hit another car, straight on, and she passed away. Amazing. Well, may her soul rest in peace. Thank you. And so, how old are you, John? I'm 29. Oh, okay. And you want to know, is there a scripture in the Bible that can help you deal with that, you say? Yes, sir. How are you feeling about it right now? I'm still shook and um still empty like I want to I want to cry but I know that um stuff happens life, life happens for a reason. Yeah. I can you know you can uh you can reverse that that I accept it, you know. Right. And but my uh my parents are I'm still like my parents are still shook about it you know they they're crying and um like I'm just here for them. And why um, are you? Why do you want to cry if you're not crying? Um, I don't, um, to be honest, just the, um, uh, I, I really, I just don't feel it in me to cry. I know it sounds cold because I don't want to sugarcoat it. Um, I just feel cold. Not that I'm being crazy or anything about like that. I, I just guess like they have to be a man about it. it. It is what it is. Yeah. And why does it sound cold to not to say you know you can't cry about it? What will be what's cold about that? Um, I guess like because I have to be a man, you know, uh, be strong. Um. And and it's it's just like I just feel like just empty. And so but I know that about I feel sad, you know, cause uh, I feel sad, but I just can't can't cry. And you don't need to cry. What would be the purpose of crying? Um, to just let everybody know that I'm in the same page, like my uh, like with my I'm with the same. Like, I feel the, the loss for my sister. Right, but why do you need to cry about that? Um, I really don't. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Just I don't have the answer for it. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't, yes, sir. But, I, I, know, I know where you're coming from. But where, I, am I I com- where am I coming from? Oh, uh, uh, like, you want... Uh, like you want the answer, uh, but I I don't have it. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, John, don't try to be like your parents or anyone else about this situation. And the people who are crying, they're not crying for your sister. They're crying for themselves. It's not about your sister at all. It's, it's for their own ego gratification because when they cry, they feel like, oh, I loved her. I really miss her. It's all about themselves. And so if tears come for you, let it come and just let it pass. Don't get, don't let it drag you down into a hole because you would become depressed and you would go years feeling that way and then telling yourself it's for your sister when it's really for your own ego gratification to make it look like you cared about your sister. And that wouldn't be true at all. Mm-hmm. So you don't need to cry. You don't need to try to be strong or weak. You just, if you should feel a sense of sadness, let it pass. Don't hold on to it. And go on, continue to live your life. Because 
your sister has expired and there's nothing you can do about it. It's not your fault. It yes, was sir. all her. And now she's paying the price for what happened. And there's nothing you can do about it. So there's no need to cry. Yes, sir. I've been uh, reading the Bible lately. Like, uh, I don't, uh, like, you, you, y'all you been talking about silent prayers. Yeah. But uh, lately, I like, uh, what I've been doing is uh, reading a, a chapter on, uh, uh, from Matthew. Of, of It's called, uh, well, like, I've been, when I've been praying, I read a, Matthew chapter six, uh, six slash five. Uh, it says about uh, Jesus and how he prays, uh, and I've been reading that and, and thanking God every day for for me for the life that He's given me and that um, I, I thank Him every single day when I wake up that I have a job that I that I could be that I'm that. I thank him for the life that he's given me, and I don't waste any single moment. I'm that uh, whatever problem, problems I have, I pray to him and him only. And so you pray to Lord's prayer. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Have you given the silent prayer a chance yet? No, sir. But I, I will, I, I will give it a chance, sir. Yeah, give it a chance. Uh, Rebuildingaman.com slash uh, prayer. Mm-hmm. Rebuildingaman.com slash prayer, I believe. Give it a try. And then still do your other kind of praying that you're doing. But do Rebuildingaman.com and do that prayer. And don't don't make yourself cry to try to fit in with your parents or anyone. Let them cry. Let them do what they do. Don't feel sorry for them or anything. And you just deal with this the way that you're dealing with it, and you're doing just fine. Thank you very much, Jesse. And uh, one last thing, man. Um, I did uh, saw you on TikTok a couple of weeks back, and that's how I, I found this channel. Amazing. <laughs> yes, nice. sir. And, uh, all I got to say is, man, you uh, keep doing what you're doing, sir. And like, uh, and I uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I pray for you, Mr. Jesse. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. So do the silent prayer and just watch those thoughts. Let uh, uh, this situation pass. You go to the funeral or whatever, but do not put yourself in the same hole that your parents are in right now because it's, for the most part, it's all ego. Yes, sir. And so just deal with it. Don't compare yourself to the way anyone else is dealing with it or not dealing with it. You just let it happen naturally. You'll be fine. Yes, sir, Mr. Jesse. Let Thank me, you very much. All right. Do the silent prayer. Let me know how it goes. Yes, sir. All Thank right. you. All right. You ain't got to be crying. If you cry, let it come and go. And don't right. identify with it as though you are crying. And then wash your face and hands and go your way. All right. You ain't got to be emotional about all this stuff. 